We did it, y'all. We did it. We did it. It's finally over. Cody finally finished his story. He finally did it, y'all. He did it. You saw the intro clip. You saw my excitement in the movie theater tonight. This feeling I have right now reminds me when Daniel Bryan won at WrestleMania 30. The euphoria I'm feeling. Today, or tonight, I said no green screen. No green screen is needed tonight. This is raw, unfiltered, uncut. Before I talk about possibly, I'm not even going to say possibly, the greatest night two of the two night eras of WrestleManias, I got to give some love and appreciation to Roman Reigns. He literally carried WWE on his back for the past three years. Those first two years alone was some of the best work Roman Reigns has done in his career. And even in the third year, there was some good stuff. But there's no doubt about it. Future WWE Hall of Famer. He turned himself into the top guy that Vince McMahon always wanted. He turned himself into that and beyond. I don't think anyone ever thought Roman Reigns would have reached this type of level, this pinnacle, this peak. And he did. The fact that we had so many people all around the world actually wanting Roman Reigns to retain should let you know how things have changed. So I want to give the proper love and respect for what Roman Reigns did with that championship. There will never be another title reign like that ever again. And the matches that he put together with the various opponents, legendary. And the match they put on tonight, cinema. Before the show, I said night one. Uh, what did I say? Night one was... Infinity War. I had to think about it. Night one was Infinity War. Night two, tonight, was the end game. And tonight was the end game. This was great. If you did not watch that match, you missed out. If you didn't even watch night two tonight, you missed out. Triple H cooked. This is the first WrestleMania where Vince McMahon wasn't involved. And it was easily one of the best WrestleManias out there. I wouldn't be mad if I'm a kid and I watch this and I don't say this was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I wouldn't be mad at you. I don't think anyone can doubt that this was one of the best WrestleManias we've had. Last year was pretty good. But night two alone solidified this as one of the greatest. My voice is shot. <clears throat> but I'm going to start with what we want to talk about first. Because obviously everybody's talking about this. I'm going to get into some of the, the, the great stuff that happened on the show. Once again, shout out to everyone that pulled up. Shout out to everyone that was on the Twitch stream. Um... I didn't take as many notes because I'm interacting with the Twitch stream and watching the show and everything else, but I took as much as I could, but I'm just here to talk. I'm here to talk. I tried to take as many notes as I could <laughs> for this Roman and Cody match, and boy, did they make this feel like a big fight because it was, and I loved every second of this. This was fantastic. 
So we're going to start with the main event because we got to talk about this. I know this is what y'all want to talk about. So we get to the main event. Cody comes out there, but it's different. He comes out there with this, this cool mask on, like a crown of sorts. And then his wife comes out there, Brandy, comes out there, takes the mask off, tells him to go out there and get the job done. And it was, it was just, you knew something was different just off that interest alone. And when I say the crowd was pro Cody, this was great. This was fantastic. I just, it had that excitement in the air that you knew something may change here tonight. Just with that entrance alone, Cody coming out there with determination on his face, with his wife by him, his side, fantastic. Then Roman comes out there. It wasn't his normal entrance. He had a choir out there. He had strings out there, violins and stuff like And they were singing his song with this, this orchestra style feel. He had a conductor. It was great. The ultimate final boss. You knew this was going to be different. The Cody chance tonight. You knew they wanted Cody to win. Last night, The Rock, he's just, he's The Rock. He's so cool. It's hard to hate him, but he finds a way to make you hate him. So it was some mixed reactions. But tonight, it was all Cody Rhodes, and that's all that crowd wanted to see. Roman started whooping Cody early in the match with the kendo sticks. I, I want to say Cody tried to go for the tables early, but Roman had stopped that. He's like, nah, I'm smarter than that. Then Roman takes Cody into the crowd and he ends up reversing some like a suplex onto this like platform structure and this bloodline rule. So the ref really couldn't do anything. But for the most part, they kind of kept things contained ringside and, and within the ring. It, this was a slow cooking match, which Roman Reigns is very good at doing. He's very good at slow cooking matches. And this had the right pace. They weren't going too fast. They weren't going too slow. They had the right pace because of the story they were telling. At one point, Roman, he's in his bag now. And I love the fact that, I don't know if y'all know this, but there's a lot, there's there's more cursing in these matches, on these shows. Like, it's, it's a little bit more uh, edgier. And Roman had Cody choked up on, I believe, the second ropes. And the camera caught him. And Roman said, I'm going to send you to Hollywood like everybody else I've done. And he said, this is my company, little bitch. And I'm like, oh, this is, we're here. And Roman's demeanor, it's always been condescending. I'm better than you. I'm going to talk my shit. But he felt confident because he knew he had a game plan. Bloodline rules. He knew he was good. Now, this was cold. Roman hits Cody with the crossroads. Disrespectful, right? He gets the one, the two, Cody kicks out. And Roman himself says, that move don't beat anybody. So it is what it is. Like, I just wanted to hit the move on you just to see, but that move don't beat anybody anyway. Really downplaying Cody like he's some J-A-G. Just Peak disrespectful stuff from Roman here. Roman decides to hit uh, Cody with a low blow out the ring as Cody's about to uh, um, put try to put Roman through the table. And then Roman reverses it after he hit Cody with a low blow and ends up putting Cody through uh, the announce table. Then Roman uh, throws him back into the ring, hits a Superman punch, for a close two count. Then we knew Cody was going to get his get back. Cody hits Roman with a spear as a way to, if you want to hit my finishing move, I can hit yours too for a very close two count. Like I said, they're starting to crescendo. The match is picking up. The crowd was electric. And shout out to the crowd tonight. I think last night the crowd was just cold. It was very, very cold out there. So, uh, I mean, let's be fair. If you're in a place where I don't think they expected it to potentially be that cold, especially if you're not from the States. And, you know, WrestleMania brings people from all around the world. So 
I think it was just the wind chill factor that really kind of made, you know, the fans there a lot more quieter because, I mean, you're cold. It's kind of hard for you to cheer the entire time when you're freezing your butt off. But tonight it was much warmer and the crowd brought the energy. And I think just these matches, they just cooked a little bit better. People cared more about them near almost every single match. For the most part, it was some good stuff to really, you know, kind of get the crowd into. So the crowd showed up tonight and uh, you can hear it in the response. So Cody hit Roman with a spear for a close to fall. And then the shenanigans begin. Jimmy comes out there, kicks Cody in the face. But you knew Jay was going to come out there. Jay comes out there. They start fighting up the ramp. Crowd goes crazy. And Jay tackles Jimmy off the stage onto the, uh, there's like some table set up off the stage. Nice spot. Then, um, this was a, this was a really cool spot. So Roman early in the match hit Cody with the crossroads. Cody at a later point in the match hit Roman with the spear. Cody has Roman on the outside and Cody hits Roman with the spear barricade spot. I thought that was a cool, cool moment. Yeah, we, we saw it last night, but to see Roman get hit with it, I thought it was, it was a, uh, a, a cool spot. Now, Cody's getting momentum, but you knew Solo was going to come out there. Solo comes out there, and they start, and this was, it was reminiscent of last year. Cody hits one crossroads. Cody hits another one, but as he's about to go for the third, Solo comes out there and spikes Cody in the throat, and then they hit the spike spear combo, and he kicked out again the story of this match is everything that roman threw at cody he was kicking out solo couldn't believe it roman couldn't believe it now they're about to pack up uh cody and john cena's music hit crowd goes crazy i go crazy we, it was rumored and it made sense john cena comes out there starts packing up solo gets him out of there then he packs up Roman, hits Roman with the FU, the attitude adjustment in the ring. Then he goes outside of the ring to uh, finish up Solo. And he hits Solo with the attitude adjustment through the other announced table. Crowd goes insane. It's madness now. Now we cooking. Now we cooking with the Crisco grease. And then, and then, The Rock comes out. And we know John Cena and The Rock have history. Rock comes down to the ring. John gets in the ring. They stare at each other. It's a holy shit moment. It was, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. Because of their history. This was so good. So damn good. And then The Rock hit John Cena with one rock bottom. And that was it. Thank you, John, for coming here. You, you've been great. You can go back to Hollywood now. But that was just a great stare off. Holy shit moment. Then all of a sudden, you hear the shield entrance music. You're like, what's going on? What, what's happening here? Right? Like, what's going on here? What shield? And then Seth comes through the crowd in his shield gear, but the rock stops him dead in his tracks. <laughs> like, Seth is just laid out on the ground in the shield gear, but the rock stops him dead in his tracks. At this point, The Rock takes off his belt with the Mama Rose or uh, Rhodes on it. He's about to go to work on Cody. And then all of a sudden, we didn't hear a glass break. Like, a lot of us thought Stone Cold would come out there. No, 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 no. We heard The Undertaker gone, bro. Everybody lost their fucking mind. I lost my fucking mind. I was not thinking The Undertaker of all people. We know The Undertaker and The Rock have plenty of legendary stories and matches. And he appeared right behind The Rock. When I say that was a holy shit moment, just fantastic. Does it make any fucking sense? No. It makes no lick of sense. Maybe they will explain it. I don't know, but I don't fucking care because it was great. It makes no sense why the Undertaker would randomly show up. But he was there and I loved it. He choked slam.
The Rock for his troubles. Crowds going crazy, lights go out, and all of a sudden, The Undertaker and Roman, I mean, and The Rock just disappear out the ring. I was like, uh, okay, but at the end of the match, you see Roman consoling, uh, well, he's next to The Rock. I mean, not Roman, uh, The Rock and Undertaker disappear out the ring when the lights come back on, but you see The Rock later on after the match is over. So I don't, I don't know what was going on. I really don't know. I, well, I, it's just, you know, Undertaker and his magical powers. So at this point, you knew what time it was. My heart is racing. Because I'm like, are they going to do this? Is this going to happen? Are they really going to pull the trigger? Cody. No. I have to make this point. Before we get into this, before. This is what I mean by good storytelling. So Roman is up. He picks up the chair. Cody's on one side of the ring. Seth is on the other side of the ring. And he looks at who he can hit with the chair. And he decides to hit Seth with the chair because he couldn't let it go. He couldn't let let the fact go of what Seth did to him years ago. That stills bought this still bother him to this day, storyline wise. In fact, some could say this kind of turned Roman to what he is now. Seth has even said that I'm kind of the reason why Roman is what he is, and he couldn't let it go, and it cost him. That moment, if you watch that, that moment in the match where he could have hit Cody and he probably would have won storyline wise, but he hit, he had to hit Seth in the back with the chair because he just couldn't let it go. He saw the shield gear and he couldn't let it go. He hit him in the chair. Cody was able to uh, counter that. Well, pretty much neutralize the chair itself. He hit one crossroads. He hit two crossroads. He looks around. He hit three crossroads for the one, for the two, for the three. And we have your new WWE Undisputed Universal Champion. Cinema. Peak cinema. Great storytelling in this match. We knew it was going to be overbooked to hell, but man, this was good. This was great. This was fantastic. And you can see Roman rolling out the ring. And you can see The Rock kind of, I don't know if he was consoling him, but, it, you know, he was trying to help him up, I guess. I'm not sure. But Cody finished his story. I, I like the touch of a lot of the baby faces that Roman has beaten came in there to hoist Cody up and celebrate with Cody. All most of the baby faces, the people that Roman has beaten over the years, they came out there to congratulate Cody. Even CM Punk came out there to congratulate Cody. We're going to talk about CM Punk later on. Cody grabbed the mic as he's celebrating with everyone. He has his uh, wife out there. He has his mom out there. It was even a beautiful moment of him finally giving the championship to his mom. Something that he he wanted to do with his dad. Like his dad wanted to be able to do that. He couldn't. He wanted to be able to give it to his dad, but he was able to give it to his mom. He got the microphone. He asked for Bruce Pritchard to come out there in Triple H. Because he said those two individuals were very instrumental to getting him back into WWE. Bruce come out there, gives him a hug. Triple H comes out there. And I like that he fact the fact that he said that Triple H, before he announced him coming, he wanted him to come out there. This guy is going to be leading the new era of WWE. And it, it seems like we're we're there. They all hugged and embraced. Everyone showed love to Cody. And the show goes off the air. But Cody, not sitting in the ring, but standing in the ring as your new champion as the pyro goes off. Cinema. 
I, I there's not much to say. Night two, that match, overbooked, possibly. Was it fun? Fucking right. That match was fun. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to go into great details on a lot of these because I really just wanted to talk about this, but EO and Bailey women's championship match, co-main event, fantastic. Enjoyed this match. Definitely enjoyed it. I love the fact that this crowd let it be known. They were pro Bailey. Bailey came out there with a new theme. So, you know, she's certified babyface. And this crowd was pro Bailey. And this was honestly one of the better matches EO has had in a very long time. No interference. This was just straight one on one. This was good. EO was working over the need the entire match. Bailey was selling it. But ultimately, Bailey took a best shot. Uh, EO, Bailey took EO's best shot over and over and over. The the going to the top rope and diving off. But ultimately, Bailey was able to win the championship, and your new women's champion, rightfully so. Crowd gave her a big standing ovation. This was fantastic. Great match. Great match. Great women's match. Loved it. Logan Paul versus KO versus Randy Orton. This was so good. They killed it. This honestly, possibly could have been match of the night if it wasn't, if it wasn't for the main event. This would have been match of the night. This match was great. Fantastic. Early in the match, KO and Randy were pretty much on the same page, packing up Logan, but eventually, you know, Randy being Randy, you know, you can't always trust a Viper. They turned on each other. But what we got to talk about, <clears throat> who was in the Prime Bottle mascot fit? A lot of people thought it was KSI. No, it was Speed. <laughs> this Randy Orton was about to win. He was about to win. And <laughs> Speed saved Logan Paul from a punt kick. Because Logan was using the brass knucks and Randy was able to get the brass knucks away from him. He get, didn't need him, gave him to the ref or threw him away. And then he was about to go to that place again. He was about to punt kick uh, Logan into another dimension. Back to the you know what force. That's where he was going to punt kick his mind. Back to that force, right? And as he was about to do it, we didn't know it was speed at the time, but the guy in the uh, prime suit pulls him and saves him. And then he opens it up and it reveals his speed. And he's talking trash to Randy Orton. And Randy Orton Spartan kicked this man across the ringside area, took that prime suit off of him, unloaded the other announced table, and got on top of that table and proceeded to RKO speed into another fucking dimension. And it was chef's kiss, bro. Speed died. Speed died. But ultimately, Logan was able to capitalize off the RKO that um, Randy hit on Kevin Owens. And he was able to pin Kevin Owens because of that. He threw Randy out the way. And he retained, which didn't have a problem with it. Like I said, I did take notes on this, but this match was just fun. Go watch it. Logan's just fucking athletic. The I want to say it was the frog splash into the... No, it was the swanton bomb onto Kevin Owens and then rolled through into a frog splash on a Randy Orton seamlessly. Swanton off the top, hit Kevin Owens, rolled through, hit the fucking... Frog splash on the Randy. Beautiful, bro. It's fucking set. Logan is just, he's hes built different. Great, great, great. LA Knight, AJ Styles. This was a really good match, too. They started off hot. AJ got some new theme music, and he didn't waste no time. He ran down that ramp, met, uh, AJ, um, I mean, AJ ran down the ramp, met LA Knight at the ring. They start throwing hands, and this was a good one. It was a very good one. Enjoyed this match, but the right person won, and LA Knight, Getting the win with the BFT. LA Knight appearing at his first WrestleMania and getting his first win. This was fun. I enjoyed this. It was definitely enjoyable. 
Definitely enjoyed this. Um, the uh, six man street fight with the uh, Street Profits and Bobby Lashley versus AOP and Karrion Cross. Um, I wasn't really as hyped for this match, but this was fun. This was definitely fun. Bubba Ray, my bad. I'm so sorry <laughs> for mixing that uh, up. Um, Bubba Ray came out as the special guest referee since it was a Philly street fight match. Um, Kendo Sticks was used um, early in the match. Um, the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley, they were getting packed up with the Kendo Sticks, like just, just brutally. They were whooping them, but they were able to get the upper hand. They even um, carrying cross, cross, <laughs> cross the line, no pun intended, and uh, tried to get a little bit chippy with Bubba Ray Dudley, and Bubba Ray pulled out them glasses, said, are you sure you want to do that? They started packing them up, and uh, Montez end up doing, uh, uh, I guess you could say, it brought us back to the, the th uh, not the 3D days, but brought us back to the Attitude Era tag team days, the Dudley boys, where they go to the top rope and hit the West. Ah! And um, that was a cool moment. I love that, just, just the nostalgia of that. And then they all hit each other and get the tables. It was, it was, it was great, bro. It was, it was great. And Snoop Dogg on commentary was fucking hilarious, bro. And the, uh, what was funny, I want to make a mention of this. They set Karen Cross on one of the tables, but it broke. So they, you know, went and got another table, put them in there. And Montez hit a beautiful frog splash from the top rope on the Karen Cross through the table for the one, two, three. And Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits won which they needed this. They needed this win. This was fun. This was definitely, I don't know if I would have put this on WrestleMania weekend. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure if it needed to be on there, but either way, this was a fun match. And, uh, you know, the crowd was into it and I worked my way backwards. We got to talk about Drew versus Seth. And I'm not going to go into great detail because this was just, we're just going to get to the ending of this. It took, Four Claymore kicks to put away Drew McIntyre. When the match started, Drew hit Seth with a Claymore kick. It took four Claymore kicks for Drew to put away Seth Rollins. And he finally did for the one, two, three. And it was a great moment because Drew got his moment at WrestleMania. He got his moment at WrestleMania. It looked like he was damn near getting emotional. It was awesome, bro. Crowd was cheering for it. I was cheering for it. And you can see Seth Rollins even like kind of gave him the seal of approval. Like towards the end, you there's a camera shot of Drew holding the title, looking at Seth like on his knees. And it, it sounded like Seth said, you deserve it. That's what it sounded like. I don't know. Y'all let me know if that's what Seth said. But it, it was basically, it gave this endearment of you bested me. It took four Claymore kicks to get this thing out of here. But this is where it cost Drew. Throughout the match, Drew would just antagonize CM Punk, make looks at him. He even tried to hit the GTS on C on Seth. And CM Punk's like, you need to be focusing on what's going on in the ring. You know what I'm saying? And it cost him. And that's what I like about this theme on some of these matches. At WrestleMania this year, sometimes being too cocky, being too arrogant, and, and thinking you got everything in the bag can cost you a, a match. We saw it happen with Gunther with his distraction of always looking at Sami Zayn's wife. We saw it with Roman Reigns with his distraction with Seth because he couldn't let that, that hatred go. He couldn't let the portrayal go. And we've seen it here with Drew because Drew came over there. He sat on the table, Indian style, and he was mocking CM Punk. And he kept talking shit. He's like, bro, this is your moment. Like, what do you worry about me for? And CM Punk said, you know what? I had enough of your shit. And he binked him right on top of the head. He took off that arm brace. He hit him with the arm brace and started packing him up, just beating him up, stomping him out, stomping him out, crowd going crazy. And throughout the match, when Drew would look at CM Punk or, you know, kind of 
look towards his direction or get close to him, the crowd would chant CM Punk. So they're chanting CM Punk at this point. Drew's getting packed up. He won. And Seth said, I couldn't take it. Then all of a sudden, you hear Judgment Day music. And I'm like, oh my God, are they about to do this? Damian Priest runs down that ramp. Runs down. I ain't never seen Damian Priest run this fast. Runs down that man, ramp. Clocks. I mean, he cold clock Drew McIntyre with the briefcase. Clink. Knocked him down. And he cashed in. Threw Drew in the ring. And he hit him with the one. They they pinned him. Drew, um, not Drew, um, Damien, after he clocked him <laughs> with the briefcase, cashed in his money in the bank, and he hit him with the one. He pinned him for the one, two, three. And the crowd goes crazy. Crowd goes insane because we have a new world champion. Drew was the champ. He had his WrestleMania moment. They gave him the moment. And then he lost it like that. All because he couldn't let the CM Punk stuff go. And he cost him. He cost him the match. Well, not the match. He won the match, but CM Punk cost him the title. And CM Punk's just, he's clapping. Because CM Punk knows all about winning money in the bank and cashing in at the right place at the right time. And just CM Punk just clapping. Just laughing. Because it, it he had his moment. He he got too disrespectful. And he doesn't have the championship no more. And what I love, CM Punk posted the same image of what Drew has been posting for months of here lies CM Punk's WrestleMania, you know, dreams, aspirations. And then the roles were reversed. On the tombstone now, he posted on the story on the tombstone is, is Drew McIntyre's face on the tombstone while CM Punk just got the thumbs up. This is great. Great way to start off the show. But overall, night two, fucking fantastic, bro. This was... This is great. Night two was was fantastic. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better ending. Overall, this WrestleMania re weekend has been great. Monday Night Raw is about to be... Oh, I can't wait. They about to cook. I don't think we're going to have a, a Monday Night Raw like we did last year. That shit was fucking awful. I think this year we're going to have a great Monday Night Raw. Overall, I gave this show a 10 out of 10. This is... In my opinion, the best night two of any of the two night WrestleManias. This was great. Storytelling at its finest. Great matches. Crowd was into it. This was fun. This was fun. They started off the show very hot. They ended off the show even hotter. I'm going to go back and watch that Roman Reigns match. Roman Reigns versus Cody. I got to just to relive that. This will be a match. I will go back and watch those. I can watch the whole thing, but just, just, I want to, I'm going to watch the whole thing first time through, but I, I definitely like later on in years, I'm going to go back and watch just like those last 10 minutes of just epicness. And just to hear that crowd pop again. Legendary. Comment down below. Let me know. Did y'all enjoy this year's WrestleMania? Did y'all enjoy night two? What was your favorite match from night two? What was your favorite match from this WrestleMania season? And was this night two one of the best night twos of the two night WrestleManias? And also, how do y'all feel that Cody finally finished the story? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. I'm still getting to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week. Peace.